Hey everybody, good morning and welcome to the Image Talks Women's History. We are still rolling. It is still the month of March and it is still Women's History Month. And so here at the Image Talks, we are celebrating women. We are celebrating all of our accomplishments, everything that we are doing to make history, break barriers, kick down doors and smack. No, I'm sorry, not that part. Anyway. <laughs> Got a little caught up in my Monica jam. But anyway, I'm Danielle Baskin, and I want to welcome each and every one of you guys to the Image Talks Women's History. And so this month has been so amazing. I cannot believe that we are almost through the month of March. We've had some amazing women that have come and talked to us. We've had the great uh, Jasmine Phillips, PR, marketing guru, and now published author. Who else? We've had the uh, activist T. Marie King came and kicked it with us uh, one day. Judge Ruby Davis, who is making all sorts of history right here in the city of Birmingham. We've had, I mean, all sorts of women have come through this platform. Yesterday, we had prayer warrior and educator for Larisha Howard that came, uh, Minister Benita Cheney, who dropped so many nuggets and wisdom, and it's just going to get better and better. And today, Come on, y'all. Like, I got a secret. I'm excited. Y'all see, I'm all decked out today in my in, in my piece. And one of my favorite pieces uh, that my homie hooked me up with, she connected me. Because, y'all, this woman that I'm bringing on today, this is my girl. This is my dog. This is my homie. All of that. Uh, Miss Sharifa Whip, fashionista and world traveler, as I like to call and pin her, will be here with us today. So, listen, go ahead and tag your friends, your family, your loved ones, anybody you know, your your enemies, your homegirls, your whatever, and tell them, hey, tune in to the Image Talks Women's History. Danielle is going to be talking live with Sharifa Whip today, and I am so excited. Y'all have seen me interview Sharifa, Sharifa before, but I could not do Women's History Month without her. I had to make sure that she was in the mix with us this month, and I was like, friend, I don't care how many times we've talked. We, we, she was one of my first interviews when we launched the Image Speaks uh, over a year ago. Uh, and then I interviewed her again. We had a kickback on her birthday this past September. And now we are back. She is doing some amazing things. And everybody, I was like, hey, every time you do something new, I want to hear from you. I need to know what's happening. I want to know what you got going on. So anyway, Sharifa Whip is here with us in the mix on this morning. So I am going to get a chance to talk with her. What else is happening? Oh, today's day. I normally always give y'all the day. Y'all know I screw it up every single day, but I think we finally got it right. Today's date is Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021. We are in the land of the living. We are blessed to just be a blessing. We're excited to be here. I am stoked. It is a lot happening in the month of March. There's a lot happening in this season. Listen, and I don't want you to miss it. God is doing some really, really amazing things in my life, in the life of so many that I'm connected to in your life. So don't miss the season. Don't get caught up in what's not happening. Don't get caught up in what you can't see happening. Don't get caught up in the hype. You're fine. All is well. You will do well. You will be well. You just got to keep it moving. So listen, y'all know I have a rap song in my spirit every time. And I'm like, Danielle, no, you cannot rap. Like, this is not the time. But anyway, I digress. Listen, y'all be faithful. Stay faithful. Stay in the game. Stay in the mix. I know you feel like it's a lot going on. I know you feel like things aren't moving in the direction that you want them to move. But when I tell you that the Lord is working things out on your behalf, that's what I mean. Like, I don't know about y'all, but he is working some things that I cannot see. Y'all, we, we pray every day and say, Lord, protect us from uh, danger seen and unseen. But of course, if you don't want to see the dangers, then listen, he is doing some things on the back end that you may not be able to see. Some of those things he's protecting you and keeping you from, and some of those things it, he wants to surprise you. Boom, here you go. I got you. So listen, stop acting, stop tripping. Things are not as bad as they seem. They will get better. You just got to stay the course, stay in the game, stay faithful, continue to keep praying, all of that good stuff, and God will prevail. He will show up and show out in your life. So anyway, good morning to everybody that just tuned in to the Image Talks Women's History. Thank you so much for your love, your hearts, your likes, your shares. Please check in. Let me know where you're watching from this morning. Say hello. We want to say hello and greet each and every one of you guys on this morning. Hello to Miss Allen this morning. I just saw Miss Will. Williams pop in. Larissa, she's always in the mix. Miss Allen's always in the mix with us each and every morning. Thank you guys for your continual support for the image. Uh, but let me know where you're watching from. Tag your homegirl who live in D.C. Tag your homegirl who lives in Florida. 
listen, it's spring break for a lot of the kids. I know for my child, I woke my child up yesterday morning. I was like, hey, aren't you supposed to be in class? He was like, mom, I'm on spring break. Sorry, go back to bed. My bad. So anyway, I want you guys to wake up. It's 9 a.m. We're in the mix, full swing. We have my girl, world traveler and fashionista, Sharifa Whip in the mix with us this morning. We're going to talk to her a little bit later on. And we also have Maisha Martin that's going to bring us the who, what, when, where, and why, a woman of the Bible. We always want to leave you guys with some really good scripture. Uh, a really good word, some good prayer, and a good conversation with a woman who is doing her thing right here in the city of Birmingham and is affecting change throughout like the state and, and so forth and so on. And so I'm excited. Oh, one of the things that we do each and every morning, every weekday that we show up here at 9 a.m., we want to make sure that we... Um, show you guys or bring to you guys uh, a woman-owned business. And so this morning, I am excited about this business. It's a new business that just popped up. I think they're in the new Crossplex Village over on the uh, the west side of town. And it is Three Daughters Beauty Supply. Uh, and they're in the Crossplex Village. They're located at 2401 Crossplex Boulevard. And that is Suite 105. And Three Daughters Beauty Supply is a retail beauty supply store here in Birmingham to serve the Birmingham community. Community. They will meet all of your needs uh, and they have a vast diversity of mixed products and services. Uh, they focus on a full service shopping experience by providing excellent customer service and beauty products for the consumers and professionals. Our staff is well knowledgeable, courteous and respectful. Make sure you find them online at the number three daughters beauty supply store dot com or you can call them at 205-777-5750. So make sure you are supporting our women owned businesses this month. And today we are spotlighting three daughters beauty supply. So let me see what else that I need to share with you guys on this morning. Thank you so much for continuing to tune in. Thank you for your love, your likes, your shares. Y'all are really, really like doing the most. Oh, for those of you guys who are, hey, Jamia, good morning. Uh, for those of you guys who are, um, who have subscribed to the YouTube channel, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, listen. The playback, it's the playback for me. When I go back and see the amount of times that these videos, even if you're not on the live, but you can always catch it on YouTube at the image speaks on the back end, I get so excited because you guys are really, really like digging in. And then it's the comments after Courtney Howard is like, she's notorious for it. So she may not be able to watch it because she may be in class or doing something with her new hair care line. But uh, she is really, really excited and she goes back and she comments. So thank you guys for doing that. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Miss. Ruby, thank you guys so much for tuning in on this morning. Yes, definitely support three daughters. They are they are amazing. I got a tip by there too. I, I got a couple of things that I want to get in the mix and, and see and see what's happening. But anyway, uh, what I like to do, hey sister, hey sweet girl, good to see you this morning. What I like to do each and every morning is I always pray before I bring in my guests. And so I am gonna pray, uh, make sure that the Holy Spirit is all up in this mix, and then I am going to introduce to you guys my sorrow, my friend, fashionista and world traveler, Miss Sharifa Whip. So let me pray first. And while I'm praying, pray with me. When I come out of this prayer, I want you guys to continue to show me some hearts, continue to like, share, tag, tag somebody, tag a friend, tag your homegirl, tag a loved one, a co-worker, somebody that needs to be encouraged, inspired, uplifted, somebody that needs to see women who are walking in purpose. Uh, just tag somebody. Don't, don't, don't keep it to yourself. Share. Sharing is caring, right? All right. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We honor you and we give you glory for this day, for this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you, oh God, for giving us breath in our bodies. We can move our limbs. We are in our right minds, Father, and for that, we give you glory. I thank you, oh God, for allowing me to have this space and this platform to be able to lift up your name and to be able to lift up other women who are going through purpose, who are doing what it is that you've called them to do. I thank Thank you for this space. I thank you for the image. I thank you for the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, and everything that you have allowed myself, my team, and everyone connected to us to be able to endure. Father, we give you all the glory on this morning. For everyone under the sound of my voice, Father, I ask that you lead God and protect them from danger seen and unseen. I ask, Father God, that you cover them, Father, in whatever area they may be struggling with, whatever area we as women and men, the, the burdens that we carry, the struggles, the strife 
life, the ins, the outs, the ups and the downs. God, I'm asking that you give us strength to endure. And so, Father, we know that only you can do a thing, Father God. We know that you can do absolutely anything but fail. So we trust you. We give you glory on this morning. We honor you, Father, that you will take this time together with myself and Sharifa, Father God, and make it do what it is that you want it to do. So, God, we give you all the glory this morning. We are praying these prayers in faith, believing that they shall be done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. So this morning... I am so excited. I am just thrilled to bring to you guys um, a woman that I honor and I respect and I, I just, she is my girl. She is my homie. So Miss Sharifa Whip is a world traveler. She is a fashionista. She is also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. She's a mentor. She's a servant leader, very selfless. She's a devoted daughter and devoted sister, kind hearted. She is a culture creator, content creator, culture loving, Wendy from Workout World, all of the above. I absolutely love my girl and I'm excited to have her in the mix this morning. So I welcome to the Image Talks Women's History, Miss Sharifa Whip. Hey, Sharifa, you in the mix with us this morning? Wait a minute, sweet girl. We got to make sure we can hear you. Hold on. We got to make sure we can hear you. Okay. We got Sharifa on mic. Can we hear her? Can you hear me now? There we go. I okay. can hear you now. Hey, Good friend, morning. how's it going? Danielle, that introduction. I am humbled. Thank you so much. I'm like, Wendy from Workout World? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a line from Pretty Woman. For those of us that are movie buffs, uh -huh. it's a line from Pretty Woman. And she was like, hey, I'm Wendy from Workout World. Every time I see you, I was like, girl, look at Wendy from Workout World. I absolutely love it. <laughs> you are hilarious. Thank you. How are you doing this morning? Um. Listen, I've already done my workout for the day, so I'm ready to, to get it popping. I'm good. I have no complaints. I'm no grateful. Complaints. I heard from my family. I'm good. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Real talk, though. Like, what inspired you to want you? How much weight have you lost thus far? As of when last, I weigh in every Wednesday. So as of last Wednesday, I am at 42.4 pounds. 42.4 pounds. 42.4. I can't believe it. <laughs> Uh, no, I can't because I'm, I mean, like, literally, I have seen you just like drop like before our eyes. And I'm like, eh, eh. <laughs> I don't see it though. I was talking to my trainer this morning and my workout partner. The only time I see it is when I'm getting ready for work in the morning or something, yeah. and maybe something fits a little bit differently. But looking in the mirror, I don't see it. So I have to do a lot of side by side comparison photos yeah. because on a daily, I don't look in the mirror and say, like, oh, girl, you lost some weight. I don't see well, it. I want you to see it, friend, because we see it. You look absolutely amazing. You looked amazing prior to, but it's like, you know, I absolutely love when women just decide, you know what? I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to do it. Like, and I'm just going to, I'm going to bless the people every day when I post one of these workouts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful. Um, I have an awesome trainer. So, really, okay, so tell me about your trainer. Tell me how you got in the mix of like working out. How did that come about? So my trainer is Muriel Foster with MJ Fit Select. Muriel Foster with MJ Fit Select. I probably should share her information because do. she is absolutely incredible. And um, an old friend of mine put us in touch. Like I connected with an old friend around Juneteenth and we were having a conversation, you know, during the pandemic, I had gained a lot of weight um, and I was feeling a little low about it. And so uh, he and I were having this conversation and he was like, you know, I know somebody who can help you. He's like, my girlfriend can help you. And I was like, you think? So he linked us up. She and I had a really good conversation. She was like, look, just come work out me with me one time. If you like it, then we'll keep it going. And the first workout, I was hooked. The thing I like about Muriel is that she doesn't stand and tell you like five more. She literally works out with me. So oh, sometimes oh, she may work out four and five times a day based off of how many clients she has. But I appreciate that she models it for me. Um, and I'm, I try to match her energy. So um, she's been so encouraging from day one. I mean, like little little victories I have. She's like, okay, 0.2 pounds. Ah. And those are the things that make you want to keep drinking your water right. and stay away from the chips and the soda because, you know, you have somebody always cheering you on. Muriel is awesome. And I, I, I can't, I would have not have been able to do it myself. I tried. 
I just didn't yeah. do a great job myself. So well, no, so seriously, head- you you do look amazing. We Thank I think you, we friend. talked about this back in September. Yeah, and you were kinda, yeah, you were kind of like was it like the beginning or maybe maybe mid journey. Um, September had it been about three months. I think I lost 25 pounds. My goal was to lose 25 pounds by my birthday. So now I'm, I'm knocking on 50's door. I'm looking forward to losing uh, 50 pounds. You are knocking on 50's door and you look absolutely amazing. Thank you, we're going to tag Muriel. We're going to yes. put the information up because she, I, I love how you always talk about how encouraging she is, especially, you know, we've all had trainers and I've had some amazing trainers before, but I guess it's just a difference when you have that, like that motivating factor that wants to keep you in yeah. the mix. So, and I know she definitely does that for you. So I'm, I'm proud of you as always. I have, a, I have a great squad. And so the thing is, when I started working out, I have a really good friend, Eric Ag, mm-hmm. who owns Strategy Fitness. Yes, I love Eric. Yeah, so Eric like supported me with workout clothes. Cause you know, when I, I like clothes, so I want to go to the gym. I want to feel good, but I also want to look good when I'm in the gym, right? So um, Eric hooked me up with Strategy Fitness. So I had clothes to wear in the gym. Yeah. Now Muriel has her own line. So I wear some of Muriel's clothes too. So I go to the gym, I'm feeling good. I look good and it all works. It's like the little fashion show every morning. Every morning. Well, you know, we're <laughs> here for a fashion show, friend. And you, you, you do love clothes. I, I have given you the name of my fashionista. Where does your fashion come from, Sharifa? Like, I mean, where'd you get it from, friend? I don't know. I don't know. I think I've always been a little bit, I don't, I'll use the word different. I just like what I like. And I have learned to allow myself to like what I like without having to explain it. So when I go into the store, if something catches my eye, I'm pretty much going to get it and wear it. Um, I don't know. My parents were not um, clothes people. I mean, they like to look nice. Of course, my dad's a pastor. My mom was the first. So they want to. we all want to look nice, but we're not caught up on clothes and stuff. My sister is not a fashion person either. She's a big experience person. So she spends money on experiences instead of clothes. I don't know. I just like what I like. Um, And I think it's part of it is deep in me. Um, Just drawing on who I am, where I'm from, who's come before me, all of that influences, I think, what I like. So so where where are you from? I know we've had an interesting conversation. Yes. Um, but where are you from, Listen, I'm so proud. My family, my entire family is from Suriname, South America. Mm-hmm. Um, so Suriname is this little country north of Brazil between Guyana and French Guyana. And so my parents came to the States as adults and had my sister and I here in the States. So I have like a handful of family members here in the United States, but everybody else in my family lives outside of the United States. And so... Um, I'm super proud of the fact that I am the daughter of immigrants. Uh, it, yeah. it makes me work harder knowing that my parents came here without family, without a whole lot of resources and were able to live a beautiful life here in the United States. And they didn't leave Suriname because of war or famine or anything. It was just an opportunity to live a different way in a different place. So um, I'm super proud of that. That fact that, you know, my family is from Suriname. I love Suriname and I believe that I am who I am because of the people from Suriname so yeah you you talk quite a bit about your family structure being from Suriname I think I followed you when you went uh I don't know if it was a cat where did you go it was you your sister your aunt your dad and your aunt was teaching you how to make something with ginger oh yeah so um my aunt uh taught me how to make ginger beer yeah so it's like a thing now that when we get together so my my grandmothers were amazing cooks And then my mother was an amazing cook, but my mother never forced us to be in the kitchen. So I took advantage of the fact that she would always be here and I would always have opportunities to learn her recipes. And um, I don't have that opportunity with her anymore. So I really take advantage of it when my aunt comes. So there's a drink that I love. It's called Orshada. And I have an aunt, Naomi, that lives in Holland. And she makes horchata. So when she came to visit, she taught me how to make horchata. And I love ginger beer. So my aunt Ruth, she taught me how to make ginger beer. So when we get together next time, I mean, I think she's coming to, she's going to come to Alabama next month. Right. She'll teach me how to make something else. So every time we get together, I'll learn another Suriname dish. Because the food is also what ties you to the culture, right? So I grew up eating Suriname food. I didn't gr- grow up eating like um, mac and cheese and hamburgers and hot dogs and all that stuff. I always had a full Suriname dinner 
every day growing up. Really? So I look forward to like learning these things so that I can cook for my partner one day. <laughs> yes, you, yes, you can. And who's your partner one day? We talk about this. Oh, yeah. Often. So Serge Ibaka, he's an amazing, <laughs> Serge is an amazing chef. We know that he's from the Congo. So, so maybe he can teach me how to make some Congolese dishes and I'll teach him how to make some Surinamese dishes and we'll just bring yes. the two the two uh, countries together. I feel like it's a match made in heaven. I just feel like it's going to happen. We're going to, Serge Ibaka, if you're watching, <laughs> here's your <laughs> brain. We're going to hook this thing up because I, I love it. it. But you are, as, as much as you are looking forward to like cooking with your aunts and all of that, I'm looking forward to watching. And so I always, I was so, I, I think I was hooked in when you were there, your dad is a Lakers fan, your sister, y'all just kind of go all out, but just to actually see you like with your aunts and like that whole process was like super stoked to me. I was, I was watching you pray, but now you traveled quite a bit. You, I, every time I look up, I feel like you gone. You, I mm. text you like three times. I be reposting old pictures. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you've been anywhere in a while. Anywhere. How many, how many countries have you gone? Like, have you traveled to? Can you like count? Do you remember? What's your favorite? Uh, okay, so Suriname, of course, is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, Ghana is my second favorite. Peru is my third favorite. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed Peru. I, I enjoyed Peru more than I thought I was going to enjoy really? Peru. Um, but my last trip was to Egypt. My sister took me to Egypt for my birthday. Um, and Egypt was awesome, too. I felt like Egypt was a history lesson. It was a relearning of history mm -hmm. instead of it just being pure sightseeing. Because everything that I had been taught in school about Egypt was incorrect. Really? So mm-hmm. A whole lot of stuff was incorrect. And there was some stuff I should have known. Like Nefertiti was not an African woman. And I was thinking all my life, like Nefertiti is an African woman. And so, I mean, it's a, Egypt was a lot. I would go yeah. again. I had a wonderful time in Egypt. But I love, I love Suriname. Not only because that's where my family is from, but Suriname is one of the few countries that still has maroon. So I was able to travel to some of the maroon communities and see how mm -hmm. people have been living for hundreds of years. And it was just so live. It was so rich. And yeah. I tried not to go and take as much as I wanted to just kind of go and just, well, I don't want to, I didn't want to take a whole lot of pictures. I really just wanted to be there and be in the moment. An experience. And, face mm -hmm. and, and I, I mean, it's still etched in my mind. We stayed at Anaula, this, this resort that's like kind of like on this little island that only fits 50 people. Really? I mean, it was so live and we would go to sleep every night and you could hear the river going. It was just, it was beautiful. That, that was one of the best trips of my life. My entire family, we all went together. It was, it was super live. So. Wow. Okay. So where have you not gone or where do you like, what's next? What's your next trip? Well, I want to go to Ghana again at the end of the year, but uh, I want to see Bali. I want to see Mauritius, Ooh. Morocco. I mean, I am I mean, you go to Bali. I'm going with you. Okay, listen, my sister is the one that plans these excursions. We were actually supposed to climb another mountain. Um, we were supposed to do the, ba the base camp of Mount Everest, Yeah. but uh, the shutdown came. So we were not able to do that. But um, that's that's one of our upcoming trips. So I turn another year, hopefully I'll make it to another year, uh, a, a big time year next year. And I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro again next year. Really? So, I just, I find that so fascinating that you just like, you're like, okay, let's go. And like you and Charity, I love the way you talk about y'all sister bun and how she's here for the experience. Like, I feel like y'all should make this like a, a group and like take people. We should. Like, we should. Charity yeah. is the best person to travel with because she's not going to let you sleep in. She's going to make sure you see really? everything. Mm -hmm. Charity has a set item. If it were up to me, we'd get up like at 11 o'clock and make it do what it do. But my sister mm -hmm. is up early. And she's Charity like, is my kind of girl. Charity makes it happen. Charity is the reason why I have had all the experiences I have. Because if, if it was up to me, I mean, I think big, but my pockets are small. And so, yeah, Charity makes it happen for me. I'm so grateful. I'm yeah, like, whenever she wants to do you. something, I'm like, take me with you. Right. I guess the worst thing in the world for me is people wanting to sleep on vacation. And I'm like, no, we can sleep when we get back home. Like, I want to go see. I want to I want to be out. But like, no, let's let's stop right there. Speaking of going to see and be out. What does the shopping look like? What does that look like in these different countries? Do you buy a lot? Do you? Yes. Do? Yeah. When I go to Suriname, I buy a lot of fabric. Oh, yeah. When I so I try to buy fabric in every country I go to. My aunt Ruth 
collects, she used, she used to sew and she collects fabric. So I grew up, when I was little, she had like this closet full of fabric. So now I have a stash of fabric. So everywhere I go, I buy fabric. That's like the one keepsake that I will uh, make sure that I get from anywhere. Um, but the shopping, I didn't do, I'm not a good bargainer. So um, I usually, depending on where I am, I might try it or I'll have our guide bargain for me. So in Ghana, I was horrible. I was horrible. I just couldn't get it together. But in Peru, I absolutely figured out the game. So I was able to shop. I bought a lot of textiles in Peru. So I bought rugs and pillows. Um, and I bought this bad fanny pack with um, cowhide and cow fur. Oh, I'm getting I'm sick, friend. I'm getting sick. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> I try to. I love. I love accessories. I'm a real big tchotchke, whatever. So, yeah. but I'm trying to. Um, I try not to buy just like stuff that just is like um, made in other countries and then brought in as like you know how they'll say like made mm -hmm. in China, but don't say like, like the handmade. I try to buy from the local artisans. And okay. I understand what I'm buying. So I will have conversations with the vendors about like, what is this? What does it mean? When do you wear this? Why do you wear this? So that if I decide that I want to wear it, then I wear it at the right time and in the right way. See, friend, I am not a world traveler. I, I think I went on my first little Bahamas cruise with my little girls. Trip. That's what's up. I've never We're been to the Bahamas. So I, next time. But no, I want to go. Like, I want to go on a trip. You've inspired me. I definitely want to go somewhere and like kick it with you and charity and shop and just do all of that stuff. So listen, y'all have a new sister. Y'all have put in the mix. I'm yeah. going. <laughs> you can I'm come. Going. So the plan is next year. The plan is Suriname and Tanzania. So jump in on either one of those trips. <sighs> I, want, I definitely I haven't been to Suriname in about five years. So I would love, I, it's time for me to go back. I love my family. I miss my family. I miss the food. I miss the weather. You miss have, you absolutely love your family. And I so do. I know that you and your dad, that's like your homie. <laughs> you were talking yesterday about how your dad and all your events, he's like up with his video recorder. Like, and your daddy is a Lakers fan. I you got he to is a Laker. Yes. Uh huh. My dad is a real I know basketball, about right? basketball and everything. Mm hmm. Your dad is a pastor, right? Yeah, he's retired now, but he's absolutely a pastor. Okay, so let me tell you this really quick. Come on. I tell this story all the time because I think my parents had the most beautiful love story, and that is that my dad has always been super duper brilliant. And so he was a he was a school teacher. Um, and he and his friends would stand outside um, during breaks and he would see this bus going by, and my mother was on the bus. And he saw my mother and he fell in love with her the moment he saw her. And he was like, you see that girl right there? I'm going to marry her. And then finally, one day, somebody was like, oh, I know her. And my dad was like, yo, introduce me. So my mother was very, very, very deep in the church. And she told me that she was dating somebody at the time when she met my dad. But anyway, um, she hooked my dad up. She was like, listen, if you want to spend time with me, you'll come to church. He ended up falling in love with church, taking Bible studies. Um, the church that they uh, were married in, my dad helped build that church with my grandfather. Um, so I think that story is just like absolutely beautiful. And he went from, he, my dad has always been a great teacher and a great storyteller, but now, you know, he uses his talents to serve God. And so I think it's just, I think it's beautiful. It is beautiful. I want one of those when I grow up. Like, Hello, I, I want Serge to see me somewhere and be like, you see her? She's going to be my wife. I'm like, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> that part, I'm like, I'm over here. Like, I, I, I'm here. here I, I love that story. I don't think we've ever, you've ever told me that story before. Oh, my goodness, yeah, yeah. Like, I, um, when my parents would come visit, um, I'd be like, tell me a story. Tell me about when you oh. met. Because I love to hear them tell yeah. stories. My, my parents are excellent storytellers. And I think that comes from being from countries where the oral tradition is strong. Instead mm -hmm. of like putting it, writing everything down, yeah, a lot of storytelling to to uh, keep history. So I love hearing my parents tell stories. Yeah. Love, love, love. And Listen. Charity, Charity can tell a story too. Can she really? Can on the edge of your seat. And Charity is a comedian. So Charity will Charity will tell you a story, and it is hilarious. And she will have a straight face, and you are falling out. And she's like, "What is your?" <laughs> And I'm like, no, Charity, do you realize how foolish you are? How foolish you are. Yeah, listen, I love, I've never met Charity before, but I hear you talk about her all the time. But I met your dad once, and I just, like, his whole swag, he coming through, he suited up. Did you I see him in that, that jacket? I said, Dad, where did you, my dad came out in that jacket, that slim cut jacket. He yes, said, I, I went and bought it myself. I said, what? 
let me Dan find out. On a slim fit jacket. He was. He cute. <laughs> A slim fit pant. He was sort of like laced up loafer. <laughs> Look absolutely cute. Well, listen, you'll have an opportunity because uh, my family is coming next month. I'm gonna go ahead and. Well, I graduated last year with my masters, and uh -huh. so I'm gonna go ahead and participate in commencement this year. So my right. third am is coming to Alabama. So I'm excited. Okay, well, listen, put us in the mix. We want to be there. We want to see, like, we want to get with the culture and the family and everything. So I'm excited. But one of the other things that I know and love about you is that you have a heart to always serve. And so whether you're serving with UAB and your students with BSEC and B Men, or whether you're serving with Urban League or Delta Sigma Theta, like yesterday, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them what happened yesterday briefly. Yesterday, Sharifa invited me. Uh, she's working with the organization uh, Magic Moments and Urban League. Junior League. Uh, Junior League, Junior League, Junior League. Yes, and we have an opportunity to serve this family, y'all. And oh my God, little Robert <laughs> Sharifa, we could not hold our hearts together because Robert was just so gracious and grateful of everything that Sharifa had put together with her team. And friend, where did you get your servant heart from? Like, where did that come from? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think I have that big do it. heart, but, um, friend, my grandmother, you, ever were, told you, you do. <laughs> thank you for it. My grandmothers. So then I take, I will receive that, uh, because my grandmothers were known for their kindness. They were known for, um, being selfless. They were known for sharing and it came organically for them. And mm -hmm. so both of my grandmothers were very, very, very social people. So I hope that I get that from them. I think I get that from them. They were always hosting people, but there was nothing that they had that they would not share. Now, I don't have that because, you know, if you ask me for certain things, I'd be like, no, nah, girl. But my grandmothers were and my, my parents and even charity. Uh, the people around me, my family, they are such giving people. So I guess they modeled that behavior for me. And then... I in turn and also people have given so much to me it is a blessing and it makes me feel amazing to be able to to share with them so being able to do that reveal yesterday for Robert and just to see his face when he saw that cut out of John Cena <laughs> and um to celebrate him so Robert um has just been healed of cancer he had been battling cancer and um this was like his celebration it was nice to do that for him. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it 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 feeds me. Like it it feels good to be able to do that for him. Like he, I'm sure he slept with a smile on his face last night. And it mm -hmm. made his day a little bit easier because he had treatment during the day and then came to the party that afternoon. So Yeah, I think it did. I I, I applaud you. Uh, I know, you know, we were all there. We were like, excellent job, Sharifa. But his mom was so like overjoyed. His dad, the grandparents were so, I don't know, just the whole day. Even the 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 owner of Hamburger Heaven and the manager, they just were everybody was just so floored. And I I I'm appreciative that you allowed me to be a part of that. It was no hassle at but, all. Yeah. I'm gonna cut you off because it is not me, it is my community. It is my sorors that really came through for me when I was like, look, I have this idea. Can you do that? You, Danielle, did Above and Beyond, Ashley Aldridge, Marika Gray. You all came through for me in a big, big way without even asking for anything in return. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you all. You all make it real, real easy for me to be able to do what I like to do because y'all are always quick to, to back me up. I love it. It's the community for me. And speaking of community, they are blowing up the chat, Sharifa. Really? Like they going up. <laughs> they going yeah. up about you, friend. Aisha just put a comment in. Uh, who? Let's see. C. Noel Cromwell. You're definitely. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> you're definitely a uh, social Sharifa whip, and you do give generously. Yes, she does. She gives generously. Uh, Latoya Bishop, so Dr. Sharifa. Bishop. Yes. Doctor Bishop. Yes. Yeah. She said, you're such an amazing person. Yes, she is. Y'all, thank you so much for the comments. Thank Keep you. them coming in. Maisha just said, I absolutely love her and remember the things that she has sewn into my life. I love her amazing woman. So yes, to all, Sharifa is so amazing. And listen, you gotta thank tell you. people they are amazing. Another one of Soros popping in, Jackie Robinson, Jackie the bartender. Huh, Jackie. You reap what you yes. oh, Sharifa will. Keep sewing, sweet sis. Yeah, reflection of my sisters. Thank you. 
<laughs> yes, you are. But Sharifa, I've absolutely enjoyed our conversation today. I've enjoyed our I've enjoyed it too. Right. I've asked you everything that I wanted to ask. I know that there's so much more, but again, we get an opportunity to talk all the time. You yeah. know, from one of my, I, I do, I, I love to tell this story about how Sharifa and I met. And she was and like, she didn't like me when she met me. Every time I tell this story, you like, now what now? Y'all, I met Sharifa. I think I met you through Marquita. Marquita mm -hmm. Anthony, one of our mutual friends. My SAI sister. SAI My sister. sister. Mm -hmm. And we were planning uh, Marquita's album release or album listening party. And it just so happened to be at Sharifa's beautiful loft. And so I go in and I'm like, okay, I just, you know, I'm decorating Debbie. I want to move stuff around and I want to do something. And Sharifa was just like, okay, girl, like. That's not true. That's not true. That That's ain't not true. true. No, she, but no, she wasn't like rude about it. It was just like, you were just so calm and you weren't moved about what was happening. And I'm just like, okay. But y'all, Sharifa and I did not get off to a good start. And I don't know how we became so close. I don't know if it was our height, if it was our fashion. I don't know. But this is my girl, my sis. I absolutely love you. I'm, I'm glad that we met and we started off on a rocky. Yes. I think some of the best relationships start off on a rocky. <laughs> I didn't know we were rocky, but... It's all good. It's what happened then doesn't even matter. <laughs> no, nah, because the, the fact that we are <laughs> the fact that we are here and we yeah. are all laughing about it at this point, I absolutely love it. So thank you, sis, for all that thank you do for our community and all of the serving. Listen, whether you serve it in style or whether you serve in the people with your kind heart, I absolutely love it. But one of the questions that I do want to ask, uh, that I've asked pretty much everybody that I've talked to, uh, and I just want to get some insight on your thoughts and your feelings of the hashtag black girl magic. What do you feel about that hashtag? Yeah, so I've heard the criticisms of um, black girl magic about how it is, um, they, it puts a lot of pressure on black women to be superhuman. Um, but I honor black girl magic in the original intention. And, and that is to celebrate black women I think that we are incredible. We are amazing. I couldn't imagine being anything else but a black woman. I am proud to be a black woman. And so um, in, a, in a space where we are not always celebrated for the work that we do, whether it be leading a company or just taking care of ourselves in, our, in, in a basic way, we are not celebrated. So hashtag, hashtag black girl magic, I use that for everything. So you don't have to like do some big, huge, amazing. The fact that you woke up this morning and whatever, black girl magic, like the fact that you are just who you are, black girl magic. And it isn't only when black women are strong, because I think that you should be um, supported and, and recognized in your in your weak times, too. So I don't have a problem with black girl magic. I, I respect the criticism of it. And I mean, if someone doesn't want to be called black girl, I, I, I'm here for it. But you gonna always we need to find ways to cheer for one another mm -hmm. and to publicly cheer for one another and advocate for one another because a lot of spaces don't allow us to be who we are organically or allow us to even um enjoy who we are and celebrate who we are folks love to look at black women want to be like black women but have a problem when we love ourselves and when we cheer each yeah. other on so yeah. Danielle, you are black girl magic. I'm excited. I'd like to think sometimes I'm black girl magic. You are all the time. And so here we are. All the time. Absolutely. I love it, Sharifa. Thank you so much for taking time. I know you're at work today. I know you have some amazing programs that you're working on for all of your students over at UAB, but I absolutely love you, sweet girl. And you uh, <laughs> oh, Danielle, can I throw this in really quick? Yes. I love that you are highlighting Three Daughters Beauty Supply because in my mm. second career, I'm a loctician. And I once I found out, Mashonda Taylor actually introduced me to Three Daughters Beauty Supply. And so mm. I use them exclusively. So when they talk about mm. customer service, when they talk about a clean store, when they talk about being respected and having a wide selection, I drive all the way over there intentionally to shop them because Three Daughters Beauty Supply is just absolutely incredible. It, it is 
they and they're reasonably priced. So I don't feel like because they're a smaller business, they're more expensive. Mm -hmm. I love going over there and I love that like if I'm looking for something, they will help me find it. I, they are attentive, but not overly attentive. Like nobody's standing down my back or whatever yeah. while I'm shopping. So yes, yes, I love Three Daughters Beauty Supply and I make sure that I shop them whenever I'm purchasing things um, to work. Good. I'm so glad that we got like a stamp of approval. Like yes. we've never used them before. And so I had just heard of them. And so I think uh Sydney, our, our producer, she uh she introduced or she talked about them some time ago. But I'm so yeah. glad we have a stamp of approval for that business. Right next to the Starbucks. Yeah. Go and see them. They are they are everything. We're gonna definitely utilize. I look forward to their second location. Oh, and don't forget, I want you to uh we'll tag in the comments, we'll tag all of Muriel's stuff. So we yes. can her. And then how can we connect with you, Sharifa? I mean, if we want to know info about traveling, weight loss, y'all. Oh, and her sales that she does on Instagram. <laughs> we didn't even get a I'm chance to talk about oh. <laughs> oh, even, you see the sale, so you, right? Uh you I I appreciate these closet sales. So uh, part of what I said I was going to do is stop wearing clothes that didn't fit well anymore and get rid of them, like open up that space in my closet. So um, I've been having these closet sales on Instagram and they have been profitable. And I've just been using that money, put, putting it aside for when it's time for me to go on a little shopping spree. spree. So when I reach my goal weight, then I'll, I'll go out and buy a bunch of new stuff. So how can we find you on Instagram so we can catch these closet sales? And yes. But where do we need to be to find these sales? So if you want to find out about my travels or my outfit of the day or just connect with me, you can go to a Missy Whip, M-I-S-I-W-I-P on Instagram. So Missy Whip on Instagram. But if you want to follow my weight loss journey, um, follow me at Fit as a Whip. But whip doesn't have an H, so fit as a WIP. And I try to post in every day. So today is Transformation Tuesday. So I'll post a transformation pic. But I'm really transparent about my weight loss journey. So I post my weigh-ins. I post my workouts. I, I post my successes and my struggles. Absolutely. I love it. And we'll get all of those links down in the comment. I know C, it'll get them from you so we can make sure we put them in the comments because we definitely want to follow you. She is somebody to follow y'all. Like, oh, uh, we love to see <laughs> what she has going on. Uh, but again, friend, thank you so much for being here with us on today. Thank you, friend. We'll wrap before the week is out. We'll talk soon. But I love you dearly and have I a great day. Too. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so You're much. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Y'all, listen, I love me some Sharifa Whip. Y'all know that I could not do Women's History Month without highlighting her and talking about her to see everything that she has going on now. And so the new thing is her weight loss journey. So, of course, make sure you follow her. We'll get all of those links in the comment section uh, so you can follow her on her journey and be inspired. I told y'all to tag somebody who needs to be motivated and inspired this morning. So we're going to keep the ball rolling. We uh, thank you again, Sharifa, for being here with us and up next we have the who what when where and why the woman of the bible with miss maisha martin maisha you in the mix this morning good morning good morning good morning good morning hey there you <laughs> hey sweet girl hey friend how are you this morning i am blessed um, um you are blessed you look blessed very blessed. blessed you had on this morning that is my girl <laughs> Listen, don't we love Sharifa? That is my girl. Listen, she probably gonna be like, I don't even remember that. But Sharifa used to come pick me up. I ain't had no car. She used to come pick me up and take me to churches and let me sing. And the people would pay me. <laughs> See, listen, I'm telling her, I was like, friend, you don't know how you've come through for so many people. Listen. She listen, you know you're selfless. Yeah. You don't remember. You did. You used to do that for me. So Sharifa is Forever the goat. Yes, she is. Yes, she forever is. The goat. Forever the goat. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I want to go ahead and delve into the woman of the Bible of today. So we're going to talk about Mary, the mother of God. That is who we're going to discuss on today. So you can find many stories um, and her mention in uh, the Gospels, which would be Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, and also specifically, more specifically in Acts 1, uh, verse 14. <clears throat> so we're talking about the who? Mary, mother of God. So Mary was the mother of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. She was a willing servant, trusting in God and obeying his call. She was the wife to Joseph. 
um, and research pins her at about 12 to 14 years of age. And the other day we said 16 because I had read that somewhere and I had also heard in a documentary. But after researching it, it says she was in between the ages of 12 and 14 years of age. Uh, Mary was an ordinary Jewish girl looking forward to marriage. Suddenly her life changed forever because she was carrying the Messiah. What? Fearful and troubled, Mary found herself in the presence of the angel Gabriel listening to his announcement. She could never have expected to hear the most incredible news that she would have a child and her son would be the Messiah. Although she could not comprehend how she would conceive the Savior, she responded to God with humble belief and obedience. Although Mary's calling held great honor, it would uh, demand great suffering too. There would be pain in childbirth and motherhood, as well as in the privilege of being the mother of the Messiah, uh, the wind. This took place around the first century, where Mary was um, from Nazareth in Galilee. The why. The angel told Mary in Luke 1 verse 28 that she was highly favored by God. This phrase simply meant that Mary had been given much grace or unmerited favor from God. Even with God's favor, Mary would still suffer much. Although she would be highly honored as the mother of the Savior, she would first know disgrace as an unwed mother. Uh, she nearly lost her fiance. Her beloved son was rejected and cruelly murdered. Mary's submission to God's plan would cost her dearly, yet she was willing to be God's servant. God knew that Mary was a woman of rare strength. She was the only human being to be with Jesus throughout his entire life from birth until death. She gave birth to Jesus as her baby and watched him die as her savior. That was kind of heavy for me. When the angel appeared and told her the baby would be God's son, Mary replied, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And that's Luke 1 and 38. She knew of the Old Testament prophecies about the coming Messiah. <clears throat> and lastly, in my understanding, solution and lesson, Mary was willing to submit her life to God's plan, no matter what it would cost her. Being chosen by God for a high, a high calling requires total commitment and a willingness to sacrifice everything out of love and devotion to one's Savior. Uh, questions that you may want to ask yourself. Am I like Mary? willing to accept God's plan no matter the cost. Can I go a step further and rejoice in that plan as Mary did, knowing it will cost me dearly? What sacrifices am I willing to make for the sake of God's people? Am I willing to make any at all? Who am I really living this life for? My spouse, my kids, or myself? Where does God fit in to your equation? Or does he fit in at all? Why do we want to make concessions, miracles? Why do we want him to make concessions, miracles, signs and wonders for us? And we aren't willing to do the same for him. When we think about our lives and what they look like as a whole, were we worth the sacrifice? It's not worth having traces of Jesus in your life, but we must be willing to show his love wholly and fully as he does us. This makes me think of the phrase, obedience is better than sacrifice. When I think of sacrifice, I think of demanding my rights to do as I please because I because of what I've given up. I'm expecting something back that I still may not deserve because my sacrifice doesn't mean that my heart was in it. It was just something that I had to do. However, when I am obedient, that means that I am willing to be submissive no matter how great the sacrifice is for me because I know that this type of obedience Mary displays places her in a posture of complete submission and dependence on God and what he has said over her life. And what that has to do with is the placement of the heart. So some key terms that I kind of pulled from uh, the story of Mary uh, were obedience, sacrifice, suffering, expectation, uh, sovereignty, love, willingness. Um, those are some of the words that kind of stick out to me when it comes to her, when it comes to her story, when it comes to what she gave. Um, and I know that we have people on uh, Facebook Live watching now who became your mothers and you had to deal with the ridicule of being an unwed mother. 
you've had to deal with ridicule, period. You know, it, it had nothing to do with being an unwed mother, but you've had to deal with ridicule. You have you have you've had to deal with people talking behind your back, um, friends disappointing you, you disappointing yourself, uh, you being entitled as if somebody owed you something. Uh, and the truth is, nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you a darn thing. You know what I'm saying? God has given his whole son. Uh, Mary has given her whole son. Um, and what's so great about the story is God knew that this 12 to 14 year old girl, <clears throat> by the way, nobody calls her a girl. They always refer her to uh, refer her as a woman, which says so much about where she was mentally, where she was in her heart um, and how God saw her. And he gave her this this heavy, 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 heavy burden. And she was just willing like. All right, I know, I know what's gonna happen, you know. But but I'm I'm gonna give my body, I'm going to give my life to what you have given me, God, because I know at the end, I'm saving, or my participation is helping save the world. And so you have to know that when you are that type of obedient, and when your posture is correct. That the sacrifice may be great, but the reward is even greater. Um, uh, a lot of this story definitely makes me appreciate women like um, Sharifa because she didn't have to come get me. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of stories about people coming to get me because I ain't had no car. But her in specific, <laughs> her, her, her most specific, she didn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? We met via UAB Gospel Choir and... Um, she saw something in me, you know what I'm saying? That honestly, sometimes I still find it hard to see in myself. Um, but she made that sacrifice to come get me, to be willing to take me to churches and sing, um, uh, you know, be willing to use her time to stay there, hear me sing, make sure the people did me right. Make sure they broke me out like they said they they told her she that I was going they know that they were going to do, and then she would take me home or she would take me to get something to eat and feed me. And you know that that type of sacrifice, that type of love, that type of um, embrace, um, when you are privileged enough to do that or be that type of individual, that's a blessing and really it's a gift because everybody don't get down like that. Everybody ain't willing. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm pretty sure, you know, she had to, she wastes gas. I don't have no gas money to give her, but it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? What 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 she sold into my life, I'm pretty sure she has reaped gratefully, as has Mary. And so um I think that even from learning from Mary or even as a, a modern woman that we are celebrating today, Sharifa Whip that we know that, yes, sacrifice is, is great. Sacrifice is hurtful sometimes. Sacrifice me, may mean giving up your entire life um, for the betterment of God's people or your family or whatever the case may be. But when your posture, when your mind, when your heart, when your spirit is aligned with what God wants, all things will work. All things will work for the good of them that love him. So if you love him, then the the, the sacrifice, the obedience, all of that is is just is is it's your will that sometimes we have to move past. But when you are willing, listen, you are unstoppable, and God's blessings will be unstoppable upon your life. You know, so I think that we can learn a lot from Mary. Um from what she sacrificed, from the ridicule that she endured, from, you know, people probably calling her crazy because she had spoken to God and he had told her. And, you know, this wasn't no hearsay. You know, it wasn't no prophet. You know, this wasn't no secondhand message. This was a message directly from him. And as it should have been, because this was a heavy burden to bear. Um, but when God does things like that, you know what I'm saying? You should count it a blessing when he comes to you directly 
and give you your assignments. And and most of us are still searching and still looking and still trying to figure out and still trying to find our way and our, and navigate and all that type of stuff. But when God comes to you directly and say, hey, this is what I need you to do. Um, and I need you to be in this posture the entire time. And I need you to do this and do that and do that and go here and go there and go there. When it when it's direct like that, real talk is you just need to be like, okay. Ain't nobody had no dreams for you. Ain't nobody told the pastor to touch you, pick up, tell her to get up real quick. Let me right lift my hands. Ain't nobody did that. He came directly to you. And gave you direction. And that's all anybody could really ask for. Whether the sacrifice is great or small. It's, 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 it's the fact that he thought enough of you to give you your assignment. So I hope that you guys learned something on today. I surely did. I appreciate Mary's sacrifice because it saved my life. And that's and that's how I look at her and reverence her. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Every time, every single time, friend. Amen. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling y'all, who, what, when, where, and why from Aisha, it, it's for me. I know y'all may get something out of it, but I, <laughs> I'm being a little selfish. I put her in the mix because I know who she is and what's in her. So I just be needing a word. And who got a piece of paper hold up for me? That's what did it for me. Listen, I talk to Maisha all day, every day. And when we talk, like that's my best friend. So we're gonna talk, we're gonna cut up, we're gonna play, we're gonna do all of that. But when I need when I need a serious talk, this is it right here. But no, real talk, friend. It was the uh, my sacrifice is something I had to do. Uh my heart may have not been in it. That part. Like when you sacrifice some, like you sacrifice for your kids. You may not want to. Sometimes I don't want to sacrifice, like I don't want to give up. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night to come rock you to sleep. I would like for you to be old enough to sleep on your own. I don't want to take you to work, Corey. I don't want to. I don't want to. Take the day in practice. I don't want to do. What you have to do is do the things for your children, whether you want to do them or not. So it was that that whole part about the sacrifice, and I think you just broke that sacrifice is better than obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You just broke that down to a new level for me. You know, you know, we we sacrifice stuff. You know, we can tell people all day long, I sacrificed this for you. You did. Now, whether you wanted to do it or not, like it's stuff that I don't want to do all day long and twice on Sunday, but I do it the for people because the fact that you bought it up means that your heart went right. <laughs> that part. That you, part. You know what I've done for you? Like, why you gotta tell me that? Okay. Did you do right. it? Right. Why did you do it? Did you want to do it? Yeah, why you did it? Yeah, let's let's discuss why you did it. So I, I absolutely love that part. And then with that part, the last part that you mentioned about when he comes to you directly, uh, I always think about Marvin Sapp in my in my head when he says that part. Uh, it's not comfortable. That part in that song, he has you in his hands, and he talks about the part about it not being comfortable. It's not comfortable. It's not easy. But he could have went to anybody. He came to you directly. So I think when we put in our mind or when we get it out of our mind that it's about us and no, you, y yes, you feel a little weird. You're a little confused about it. Sometimes you're frustrated. You don't really know what to do. This child, Mary was 12, between 12 and 14. Think about the mindset. Oh my God. I was still swinging my purse and not wanting to wear lip gloss at 12 and had an attitude because Dana kept trying to make me wear lip gloss. And I was like, that's stupid. No, like, no. Boys are still dumb to win to girls at age 12. And here you are, Mary got a whole live assignment to carry the savior. And that first part, and then I'm gonna shut up. When you said she gave birth to the to a baby, you she gave birth and had a baby, and then she watched him die as her savior. That part almost sent me. Oh, that sent me when I was reading and I was like, oh, oh that part. That part I, I absolutely love y'all. Y'all know I uh, I talk about I ain't the very Virgin Mary in real life, but I often talk about the story of Mary and just how the ridicule and the the mockery and the foolishness that she went through trying to carry this baby that the Lord came to her and said, "Hey, you have the Savior in your in your womb," and she like, "What you 
what? What am I supposed to do with this? Right. What am I supposed to do with this? And so I often, I often always think about just how my son came about and the whole process. And I feel like I told y'all the story. Go back February 18th and watch the testimony of Corey Baskin. I, I think I told y'all on his birthday about all of that. But it is that that story of Mary is so amazing. I love her obedience to God. I absolutely love it. And we can take a page out of Mary's book to be like, all right, Lord, ain't nothing I can do about it. So I might as well accept it and keep it moving. It's me. Right. It's Here we are. So anyway, thank you, friend. I love the word. I really appreciate it. Uh, and we shall chat soon. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to call you guys in a minute. Anyway, <laughs> so okay. talk to you. any other words that you wanted to share with that? That's no, that's all. That's all that I had. And I will see you guys Thursday. Thursday. Yes. Yeah, she'll be back in the mix with us on Thursday. Thank you so much, my each for the who, what, when, where, and why the woman of the Bible. Y'all, today has been an amazing show. I am so grateful to Sharifa Whip for being here in the mix with us on this morning. And also to my bestie, my friend, my Isha Martin with the who, what, when, where, and why the woman of the Bible. I love these segments. These segments just give me life. The fact that we have a segment, it's the segment for me. But anyway, I am so grateful to everybody for all of your likes, shares, comments, to everybody that uh, mentioned us, shared us. Thank you so much continue to keep sharing uh the the live continue to keep sharing it even when it's over people can watch it on the playback on facebook at uh the image speaks or you can watch it on facebook at be the image so i love you guys i will pray us out and then i will see you guys on tomorrow morning we have lady shay taylor is going to be here with us on uh in the mix for the image talks women's history and then on thursday i kept saying friday but actually on thursday my mama is going to be here with us on the mix so catch yvonne bask and bendross this thursday on the image talks women's history that conversation is going to be so amazing y'all we all i don't know how much time we got but i'm going to get to talk to my mom and she's going to be able to share uh, some of her uh, amazing wisdom with us on Thursday. And then I think we're concluding the week with designer and minister. Oh, woman of God, Aaliyah Taylor is going to wrap us up this week. So anyway, keep tuning in with the Image Talks Women's History. We are almost we're almost there. Like it's, the month is almost over. And then we're going to roll in April. We have some amazing things that we're going to roll out there, but you got to stay tuned and in the mix. So you know what we have going on. So let me pray. Father in heaven, I thank you. I honor you and I give you glory. I ask that you give Sharifa a double full return on every seed that she has sown, Father. And God, I thank you for her light and her brilliance and her significance in this world. I thank you that her purpose and her passion is so brilliant, God. I thank you that you have allowed her to serve in the capacity in which she is serving and not even have a real life understanding of it, Father. That is how we know that she is selfless and she is honorable and she is notable, Father God. And I know that you see her. And so I thank you in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that you continue to surround her with godly wisdom and understanding. I pray that you give her everything that her heart does desires, God. And Father, we just honor you on this day. I pray for Maisha. I pray for her family. I thank you for uh, the, just the Martin family, for she and JB and Snug and, 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 and Baby Snug that's on the way, Father. I just honor you and I give you glory for everyone that is connected to the Image Talks. Uh, the image speaks or any form of the image, Father. I thank you that you are using this platform uh, so that we can glorify your name and that we can bring others closer to you. God, we give you glory. Uh, we give you honor, Father God. We thank you for being faithful to us. We thank you, God, for protecting us from danger, seen and unseen. And so, God, we are praying these prayers in faith, believing that they shall be done in Jesus name. Amen. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Image Talks Women's History. We will see you guys tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. We'll be right here on Facebook Live on at Be The Image, or you can find us on, um, where are we? We're on social media everywhere. Find us, follow us, all of the above. We're in the mix. Let's see. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on IG. We're on Twitter. Listen, we're in the mix. So just find us there. So we'll see you guys tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. You all have a blessed and prosperous Tuesday.